Director Leo, what would you do if you were in a movie and someone was talking in front of you? Are you a confronter? Yeah, I would tap him on the shoulder and say, oh. excuse me. Would you? Yeah. And you're from Minnesota? Yeah. Let's say Fallon's talking. What would you say to Fallon? Let's read it. Oh, I, oh, I bet he's going to... Excuse me. Yeah. Hi, I'm trying to watch a movie. Okay, well, it's Ooh. over there. Ooh. I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> Can you imagine? Would you really? No, if I got in trouble like that, I would like, huh, I would be like, oh, I'm I'm afraid of teenagers. I wouldn't say I'm trying to watch a movie. I'm saying... Uh, can you keep it down, or excuse, you know, I'd be a little more I'm soft. But I confronted I would someone somebody. in the Fifty Shades of Grey movie. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Roll the open quick. <laughs> Roll the open quick. <laughs> I don't want to hear the rest of that. <laughs> no, you don't. Leo, roll the open. <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Jace. Audience, how you doing today? You doing well? Good? Okay. Let us start with this. Every day, there is uh, a new holiday. You know, there's, a, uh, there's official ones that we get a day off, no mail. And then there's weird ones. Like today, I don't know if you know this, today is Angel Food Cake Day. That's right. It's Hug a Drummer Day. So find a drummer and hug. It is also Hug a Kevin Day. Aww. Hug a Kevin, is that nice? Thank you, audience. I thought you would like that. So here's the deal. Uh, here at the, in the building, at the studio, our IT guy. And who doesn't love IT guys? We have an IT guy named Kevin. I love Kevin. So I decided, and this went horribly wrong, I decided <laughs> to grab a camera and I said, now damn it, I'm gonna go hug Kevin. Uh, and this is no joke. This happened about 15 minutes ago and well, look. Today's uh, hug a Kevin day, um, but this is Kevin, our IT guy's office, and he's not in yet. So we're gonna have to turn it into hug an engineer day. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, that's engineer. That's that is. That is real life television engineer Brad. That's right, yeah. But personally, I try to make every day hug Brad Day. I really do. Let's get, <laughs> let's get started. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. That's right. Come on. There we go. What's up, everybody? Please say hello to Fallon. Oh, uh, you, let me tell you, you can always spot me and Colin at a bar and my gal pal Lisa LaCourcier, because if that song comes on, mm -hmm. we lead the clapping at that bar. You know, we do. We always clap. It's going to be wild. It's going to take a while. No, no more yeah, clapping. Yeah. It's over. Well, that, yeah, anyway. Okay, all right. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, what did you do last night? Uh, not a lot. Worked. Went home. I ordered a fancy new dog bed for my dog, Dolly. Oh, did Dolly like it? Um, no. It, it went as it normally does. You spend a lot of money on something for an animal, and instead my child is now using it instead of my <laughs> 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 It's, yeah, great investment. Um, can I ask, how long did it take before Olive made herself at home in the dog bed? Immediately. She thought it was for her. Yeah. So um, she is at that phase where she is a dog like 70% of the time. Where yeah. She acts like one. So it really worked out. 
and my dog hates it anyway, so. I mean, mm -hmm. dog bed, olive bed, yeah, same exactly, thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, exactly. So, money well spent, as Absol always. I, absolutely, uh. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I uh, I am getting, uh, I spent last night getting ready for pickleball. Uh, oh. Now, yeah. How's it going? It's, well, it's not. Uh, <laughs> uh, so really quick, if you've been with me a while, you know I also have another day job. I have a radio show in the morning, Jason and Alexis in the morning on, on My Talk 1071. And for 13 years, our biggest charity event is something called Project Down and Dirty, where every oh. year for, yeah, it's a great thing. Yeah, we raise a lot of money. And... Every year for three days, the bosses make us do something. One year in three days, we put on a Broadway musical. No joke. Aaron Schwab helped with that. Uh, one day, one year, we joined the military. <laughs> oh. uh, one year, we ran a restaurant. Well, this year, it's a pickleball tournament. I have only played pickleball once for this program. Okay. And it starts tomorrow. And we're kind of sequestered. Uh, it's crazy. I didn't know you had to get special shoes. I, 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 I'm... I'm all I want to know, all I want to do is get out of it unharmed. You know what I mean? Yeah, Uninjured. Fair. That's all I want to do. Are you wearing short shorts? <laughs> Some people are wondering. I, I may have a Richard Simmons outfit ready to go. That's right. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. I think I am actually, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. First up, the wait is almost over for fans of The Crown on Netflix. We're getting our first look at the sixth and final season of the show. Come back to the TV. Look at this. The Crown is a symbol of permanence, it's something you are, not what you do. Some portion of our natural selves is always lost. We have all made sacrifices. This is not a choice. It is a duty. But what about the life I put aside? The woman I put aside? Final season. So... If you didn't catch that, the teaser features the voices of all three women who have played Queen Elizabeth on the show. This season covers 1997 through 2005. And if you're going, oh, 97, you know what that means. It includes the death of Princess Diana. Netflix, because why not? They're splitting the final season into two parts, with part one streaming November 16th and part two about a month later on December 14th. Um, Am I the only one that hates when they do that? Yes, I'm I know, so right, audience? I, I, I mean, I get it from a, I get it from a business mm -hmm. standpoint, but as a consumer, it bugs the bleep out of me. It, it really does. They have ruined Love Is Blind for me this season because it's like three episodes this Friday, three next. It's been weeks, and I'm that's like, how they do Love Is Blind. Yeah, now they used to do, you know, a big chunk, then they split it into two, and now it's like every Friday you get a couple more. But I wasn't surprised to see they, they were doing it with a crown because it's such a huge show for them. And you wait so long for each season of yes. that show. It's been like a year and a half. Yeah. And you only get like a morsel. It's like eating like one piece of calamari. <laughs> you know, it's like because you only get yeah. four episodes. That's mm -hmm. nothing. It isn't. It isn't. That's not. Okay. Maybe that's like two pieces of calamari. <laughs> like one, two little rings. Right. Yeah. yeah. Next up, speaking of TV, the return of Frasier Crane, the reboot of Frasier, starts streaming on Thursday on Paramount+. Plus. So in the new show, Frasier moves back to Boston to reconnect with his son. Well, the first reviews are in of the reboot, and they're mixed, to put it mildly. Rolling Stone is pretty mean. Uh, it says, Frasier, the revival is an unfunny, uh, un uninspired dud. Oh. The reviewer says it's full of cringy jokes. Uh, Time Magazine, this is, I think, my favorite, actually, serves it up with this. Uh, it says the reboot serves up wilted salads and expired <laughs> eggs. <laughs> that is, of course, a reference to its famous the uh, theme song. TVLine.com says fans might hear the blues a calling after seeing this revival. Wow. But, okay, okay, they're not all bad. Variety.com is rather Minnesotan in their review. The reboot is 
more charming than expected. <laughs> they, if that's the version of, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, it gave it four out of five stars. Oh, I feel like they know somewhat of variety. I think they do, yeah. I, for, for all the other reviews to be so aggressive, and yeah. that was like, they tried their best, you yeah. know? It's like, no. The review was written by, like, Megan Grammer. Yeah, yeah or exactly. someone related to Kelsey. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't, I've said before, I, I, I wasn't a big watcher of the... Mm -mm. of Frasier. No. I love Cheers, but I didn't. Did you watch Frasier? No, no. I didn't. Yeah. So I'm going to watch it. My uh, my friend Alexis is very excited, but yeah. who knows? I don't always agree with the critics anyway. Some of the reboots have been okay, and then some are like, eh. I feel like uh, like Sex and the City, people are like, eh, at first, but I think it found its way. I do too. We time. have yet. Yeah. This is a conversation yeah. we haven't had. I, I, I'm with you. Season two found its way, found its groove. Agreed, yes. And it's not supposed to be Sex in the City. No. It's a different show. They're in their 50s. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, we, gotta, we'll, we'll, we, we could do a whole segment <laughs> on that. But lots more to come. But first, be sure to sign up for tickets to be in our studio audience. They're completely free. We don't charge you for this nonsense. Uh, head to eventbrite.com, search The Jason Show. And please, if Kendall was here, she would say the following. Only pick a day where you can actually show up. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Snakes, snakes, and more snakes coming up. Plus, Derek Conn when we return. Socials. That's right. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, Taylor Swift is, uh, is skipping the Vikings Chiefs game was the topic of conversation on several late night shows last night. Jimmy Kimmel breaks down the latest Swifty news oh. in our late night rewind. All eyes this weekend were on uh, actually on Minnesota where the world was wondering whether Taylor Swift would show up to cheer on Travis Kelsey. I was watching the game, my nine-year-old daughter walks in the room, she looks at the TV, she goes, is that Travis Kelsey? I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and then she lost interest because Taylor did not make the trip. She, Taylor Swift was at the last two games cheering Travis alongside his mother, who has become a celebrity as a result of all this. Donna Kelsey was even on the Today Show, and you can tell she is very, very excited. What was she like? What was yeah. it? I mean, you, so you got to know her a little bit. Got to see the couple games. How was it? It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> God. Blink twice if the Swifties threaten your life. Wow, Donna. I have heard. I've I've heard about that clip, but mm -hmm. I haven't seen that clip, and I didn't see Donna's uh, expression. Wow, Donna, not impressed. Well, I will say. Okay, I knew I knew you, you had a rebuttal. Know, right? Yeah. They were they kept pushing and she was like, I don't get involved in it. Like you could tell she didn't want to talk about it. So I think she was just giving very short answers because they kept pressing. Oh. So I, I think it was more like this is not what I'm here to talk yeah, about. Yeah, totally. Yes. I'm not here to talk about this. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Uh, okay, because you know what? That would get annoying. It would, because she's like, hello, my sons are very famous. They don't need Taylor Swift. Yeah. And I'm a Swiftie. I'm like, oh, they needed Taylor Swift. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. More Just Free Now, and we're staying on the topic of T-Swift. Her concert film, The Heiress Tour, opens on Friday. Some theater workers are not excited, they're a little worried. The movie documents, as you guys have heard, Swift's hugely su successful summer concert tour. Ahead of the premiere, Taylor encouraged fans to sing, dance, and engage with the movie. Something that has movie theater employees concerned about rowdy behavior. Many fans are already promising to stand in the theater and dance while watching the movie. Girl, this ain't Footloose. Anyway, <laughs> and sing along and react to every single moment. Others are concerned the rowdy fans will ruin the movie for others that just choose to sit. All of this comes as theater etiquette continues to be an issue for the Jason show. I mean, for the entire country. <laughs> We're friends, but I don't know. I have a couple missions in life. Okay. Like goofy ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to, I think everyone that drives slow in the left passing lane should not have cars. Oh. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes. That means you drive Highway 5 or 7 frequently. That's yeah. right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know how to zipper merge, you should only be allowed to ride a bike. Goodbye. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
And if you're caught talking loudly during a movie three times, you're never allowed in a movie okay, theater again. Yeah. 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 Yep. I would say that if you don't want to deal with that, don't go to the movie opening weekend. If you avoid opening weekend, then you probably will avoid that. Yeah. It's like going to a kid's movie and expecting there to be zero children talking or yammering throughout. It's, you know, it's kind of hard to avoid that. I, I completely agree. Yeah. That's what I said. Because I am on the side. I'm... I represent the get off my lawn people, and um, <laughs> and I'm proud of it because Fair. if I'm mm -hmm. Mary from Schaumburg, okay, mm -hmm. all Mary wants to do is watch the movie. Yes, fair. And if Nikki and Tiffany are in front of her and they're screaming and they're dancing like it's the end of dance, uh, dirty dancing. Yeah. I'm going to be irritated. Oh, for sure. You know? But for you're sure. right. So the way to avoid it. Avoid opening weekend, I Avoid would say. opening weekend. Go two weeks from now on a Tuesday at like 1 o'clock. There you go. You Just know what said. I mean? Yeah. yeah. No one will be doing the vigil dance. Because I do feel bad for the theater employees. It's hard enough. Oh, agreed. Yeah. Because people are rude on a random day with any movie, which I think is, that's why, if I won't do, thank you, third row. <laughs> I'm not joking. That's why I love Alamo Draft House. And they ain't paying me to say this. Mm -hmm. Alamo does doesn't mess around. If you're caught talking, yep. you are removed. You are removed. There's no There's questions. a lever and oh, they just drop you, through the you ground. Drop. <laughs> if I owned a movie theater, I'm, I would make yeah. that a priority. If you want our butts back in your seats, yeah. you better make that experience better than I can get on my couch. There. And that includes, I don't need Miranda talking uh, about the movie in front of me. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to listen to you, Miranda. I'm here to watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Miranda. The audience doesn't know if that's a true story or not. They're, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Next. Speaking, uh, st speaking of movies, winning an Oscar is a dream come true for a lot of people in the movie, uh, movie industry. But it seems one actress doesn't need to put her Oscar on any type of shelf. We hope this is a joke. Watch this. What a beautiful voice. <laughs> that was incredible. And what a beautiful Academy Award. <laughs> My doorstop. It works perfectly. Oh. Oh. Okay, <laughs> so I really do hope this is a joke. Uh, it seems uh, uh, Goop uh, uses her Oscar as a doorstop at her summer house. Um, this was part of a 73 questions video from Vogue. Now it's not clear if it is a joke. Gwyneth won the best actress for Shakespeare in Love uh, with that famous pink dress back in 99. I think if it is not a joke, I don't mean to be prudish, but that's, come on, it's an mm -hmm. Oscar. Yeah. Uh, it's not a rubber made little thing. Mm -hmm. That's just dis dis disrespectful. I'm going to guess she's leaning into it. She knows that most of the things she does, people yeah. just mock and make fun of, so I hope, yeah, she's just making fun of it. I do too, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just telling you, if I won a glitter ball trophy, I would not, uh, I would, <laughs> there's a reason I'm saying that, because next up, you've seen our first guest win a record six trophies on Dancing with the Stars, along with three Emmys along the way. Now Derek Huff is bringing his toe tap and talent to theaters across the country with his show, Symphony of Dance. Audience, give it up for Derek Huff, everybody. Hi, Derek. Hi, guys. How are you? Good What's morning. up, buddy? Okay, Derek. I don't know, Derek, I don't know if you heard that last story, but please tell me your trophies aren't used as doorstops in your home. No, they are in the bathrooms. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, actually, funnily enough, funnily enough, I actually, um, my, my trophies, honestly, the Dance of the Stars trophies are actually on the road with me on tour. Um, I put them in the lobbies as, on display just as a little something to... Oh, that's cool. A thing to look at. Yeah. Oh, Derek, that's a great idea. Okay, yeah. you've done a lot, a variety of road shows. Uh, what, what is this one like? I know it's a generic question, but when we, when butts and seats, we sit down. Well, what's the show, my friend? Oh my goodness. Um, I, like you said, I've done many, many tours, many shows, but this one I have to say I'm most proud of. Um, the, the cast of dancers are extraordinary. The costumes are beautiful. The lighting, the stage design have a live band, you know, saxophone, percussions, a cello player. Um, the energy is is really off the charts. Um, and every genre of dance you could think of, from Latin, ballroom, contemporary, tap, um, you know, you name it, every genre of music, from big band music to Latin to um, uh, rock and roll, it really has a beautiful, beautiful story in this show as well. Um, and again, 
just the dancing and the feeling that the audience, the, so far the, the reaction from the audiences have been um, unbelievable. And I've done several of these tours before, so I cannot wait to, to share with many, many more people um, on this tour. It's gonna be really special. And you're sharing the show. Uh, your wife is in the show as well, right, Derek? Yes, yes she is. My, my newly, my newly wed self is, is dancing <laughs> my beautiful wife. <laughs> And um, and it, be it really is so special. Again, it's like it's being able to share something that you love with somebody that you love on that stage um, every single night. It's it's extraordinary. And uh, yeah, I think and it's it's been a beautiful experience so far. Um, you know, being on the bus together, you know, recovering together in the ice baths every night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And of course, on stage, on stage is a beautiful thing. You're such a pro, and I should know this after you know talking about Dancing with the Stars for I don't know however many years it's been on. But Derek, I was wondering, what is the type of dance that is the hardest for you still at this point? That that you still, it's the one that you just can't conquer the way that you wish you could conquer. I wondered this. Well, I think for me, you know, I grew up being a Latin ballroom dancer, yeah. you know, competitively, even before Dance with the Stars, since I was 12 years old, traveling around the world. Um, and, uh, you know, flexibility wasn't really the thing that was, <laughs> you know, focused on, you know, yeah. it was about speed and agility. Um, so for me, I've never, been really, I've never really been a flexible person. So getting my leg up there is never <laughs> a thing. So... So, you know, whenever, so my dancers, whenever I see them and their leg is like up here like that effortlessly, I'm just like, how do you do that? I've never been able to do that. How long, um, buddy, how long does it take? Uh, how long does it take from pre-pro to getting it on the road? How long does a show like this uh, take to create for you? Well, it took me several months to just do the music because I really worked really, really hard on the music for the show. It was really important to me. I was in the recording studio with bands and orchestras, um, really creating this. Because before I put, before I danced, I, I, I was a musician. I played drums and guitar and piano, and so getting everything together to create this beautiful soundtrack. It really is like a Broadway show. Um, that was really important to me. So that took several months. And then when we started to create and choreograph and conceptualize with the props and the costumes, um, that took about a month um, altogether, um, which really is that long, long, really, yeah. um, considering what the show is. Um, but, it's, uh, but it was a collaborative effort. It really was. And that's the idea of a symphony, is that, you know, it, as individuals, we each play our parts. We ha each have our gifts. But when we come together, when we collaborate, we become something so much greater than the sum of our parts. We become a Absolutely. beautiful symphony. Hey, and that's what this that, and that's what this is. I wanna look, I wanna end on a compliment. Speaking of collaboration, I just wanna say a uh, wonderful job to you and the whole crew um, at DWTS. What a great tribute to Lynn, by the way, my friend. That was really that was classy all the way. That was really great in the season premiere. Yes, no, we're, we uh, we we miss our dear friend, um, and uh, you know we're actually, actually in the show. Actually, I have a moment in the show where um, I, you know I, I take a moment to honor him and dedicate a dance to our, our dear friend Len. And um, you know, because I, I wanted to do that for the audience as well. I think yeah. that we all grew up watching him and loving him, and and um, we've we've all lost somebody in some way. And and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a hard one, but yeah. we're honoring him the best we can. The best way we know how to is just to continue to dance and to live a beautiful life. We can't wait to see the show. Derek, thank you for your time. Thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you, Derek. you, man. Symphony of Dance. Symphony of Dance hit Chicago and Minneapolis this month. Then to our friends in Orlando. Hello. In December, they, he was already in Seattle. Check DerekHuff.com for dates and tickets. Okay, so this is the part where Fallon is like, oop, why did I sign on to be a part of the show? <laughs> You'll see why when we return. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> Fallon is not gonna like this. Coming up in just a little bit, our friend Emily from Snake Discovery is back live in studio. You're doing great. Well, you know what? I think I'm ready for him to not be with me. Okay. Yeah, there we go, yeah. Okay. With not one, not two, but a ton of new snakes to show. That and more when The Jason Show continues. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. 
Well, she is by far one of the most popular guests we've ever had on our show in nine seasons, helping us all get over our fear of snakes. Emily from the Snake Discovery Center just got back from Florida where she had one where she you got to come back to the TV. I'm going to give you a minute. Come back. Come back. She had a one of a kind find while on the hunt for snakes. Look at this. Uh, what are you working at here, Emily? We found a huge Burmese python. Oh, my God. Holy cow. Oh, what? I can't believe we found this. Holy moly. Wow. That's so much bigger than I thought it was from my road. This is insane. He's this musking all over you, too. It smelled terrible. Wow. So, oh, Ooh. my God. Nope, don't need that to happen. No. Oh, no. Nope, 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 nope. That is a very, very large Burmese python sliving around and, well, uh, showing it's a little aggression to Emily on the side of a Florida road. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show from the Snake Discovery Center. Give it up for Emily Roberts, everybody. Hello. Um, I just want you to know that Fallon, uh, I always look forward to your presence. Uh, Fallon, I don't even know where she is. I think she I left. She uh, I, she's she's hiding somewhere. Oh, she's behind our monitors over there. Yeah. Anyway, can we talk a little bit? Uh, I don't want to get overly. Si <laughs> There's Fallon right there. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be fine, Fallon. Just stay behind the. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get overly serious, but this is a problem. Uh, snakes and pythons are a problem in Florida. We're there in Orlando. Hello, Orlando. Can you talk briefly about what is going on there and why it is an issue? Yeah, so there's so many different invasive species in Florida currently, and the big one right now is the Burmese pythons. Uh, they were introduced from released pets, as well as Hurricane Andrew back in 92, destroying a reptile breeding facility north of the Everglades, Everglades which released a bunch of berms too. Now they're everywhere. So it's just, and I saw some number, and this could be inflated or conservative. We're talking somewhere around uh, statewide, uh, 300,000. Uh, am I uh, right, audience, uh, in the state of Florida? Yeah, they're, they're hard to track, and so they don't know exactly the number, but they estimate between 100 and 300,000, yeah. Is this solvable, in your expert opinion? Is this a solvable problem? I think it's a lost cause at this point. I think there should be focuses on other invasives that we can eradicate, but I think the berms are there to stay. They're there to stay. Day. I think so. Okay, hear that, Fallon? I'm just joking. Okay. Uh, uh, how many snakes did you find on that hunt? We found a good couple of dozen. I mean, we started kind of just getting tired of all the water moccasins we found, because those were old, old news after a while. But that Burmese python. Emily, oh my God. Um, okay, uh, maybe old news for you, but uh, when you say water moccasin, because uh, those bad boys, they're not friendly, right? The moccasins, they're not. They're friendly but they're not mean they don't want to chase you or anything they're still cute I mean I love them but when you see a hundred of them I want to find something different I'm sorry I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, did you say, oh, when I see a hundred of them? You mean, oh, not at one time, just oh, over your life. Between those and water snakes, we've seen so many of those. So we're looking for different, more unique things when we herp in Florida. Okay. Well, let's look for unique things here. What do we have today? The first snake I have for you is oh. a beautiful rat snake. Oh. Now, this is a Texas rat snake. You can guess where they come from. But what's different about this guy compared to most of them that you see in the wild is he was born missing his scales. He is a scaleless Texas rat snake. Super um, bizarre. How does that happen? You know, just like how you'd see like an albino squirrel in your backyard, mutations happen with reptiles too, and not only albinism, but scalelessness, which is not a good trait. I mean, they don't, they don't have that protection, but they feel like velvet. May I, are they mean? No, he's actually really nice. This species is known for having a bit of an attitude, but his name is, <laughs> his name is Buck. Yeah, yeah, he's very nice though. Buck, okay. short for buck naked, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bit of an attitude and buck naked. Descri <laughs> You're describing photographer Eric right there, yeah. Okay. Oh, they're, oh. See? Yeah. Oh, he's very smooth. Insanely smooth. Yeah, you never really get a chance to touch these. But yeah, he feels like, I don't know, velvet or yeah, peach yeah. fuzz. It's something like that. Yeah, he's very smooth. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, are they, what are these, uh, what do they eat? These love to eat rats and other rodents. Okay. Well, that's actually how they get the name, the rat snake, is they are excellent rodent control. Oh, I mean, if I would have thought about that for two seconds, I would have come up with that. Okay, let's give it up for the rat snake, everybody. Thank you. We're going to do one more here. 
and we'll save the bigger ones for Fallon. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, what do we have here? This is called a beauty snake, and they are, they really are gorgeous. They live up to their name. This one specifically is a Taiwanese beauty snake. They live in Asia near caves. They eat a lot of bats, of all things. He does? Yeah. Okay, he's recoiled, like his little head's recoiled, like he's getting ready to strike. Am I, is that right? You know, you're, you're right. In most cases, this is what was considered the strike pose with snakes, but it's only in certain circumstances. I know based on his behavior, I know the snake, he's just sitting like that to sit. They're excellent climbers because of the caves and forests they live in. Yeah. So this is just how he wants to sit. He's posing because he knows uh, Director Leo is putting him on camera five. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> are, are, he knows. Are the, you know, my usual question, uh, docile or with an attitude? What, where, where's uh, the snake here? These guys are a hit or a miss. This one is friendly, which is why I brought him for you to meet. Yeah. Uh, these, though, if they're feeling stressed, they will flatten out their bodies vertically to try to look big and scary. Really weird. They don't flatten out sideways or horizontally like a cobra. And they also take their tail and they waggle it. They don't vibrate it. They, they waggle it like a dog to just hit things around them to make noise to scare you away. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, super bizarre. He, that, that is a beautiful snake, I will say. Right, they're aptly named. It's like they have natural mascara, too, if you look at their they face. They do have natural mascara. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah. They visited the mat counter right before they got here. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> well, we're not done. Uh, and uh, this is the part of the show where we go find Fallon, wherever she's hidden. And uh, she's going to come out and join us when we come back. More with Emily right after this. <laughs> Who's here? Uh, Fallon has joined me, and as you can see, uh, Fallon is closest to the exit uh, right there. Mm -hmm. So if we need to leave at any point, let's welcome back Emily uh, to the show. Now, M oh, now before we talk about this, we had a question, uh, something that I missed when when you were in Florida. You said one of the snakes musked on you. What is that? Yes, so when snakes are scared, they have a musk gland, which is basically them just emitting a very foul-smelling liquid is the musk. Uh, it's part of their all-in-one hole down there, which is very convenient. Oh. Oh. But you will smell <laughs> terrible after that. <laughs> But on their dating profile. I, 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 I was going to say, a, a swipe left, right on that one. Yeah, okay. The all-in-one. Okay. Uh -huh. What do we have? So I figured we'd start with the lizard. Since Fallon isn't a huge fan of snakes, we'll ease you into okay. a nice big yeah. snake next. It's a gateway mm. reptile. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is called a blue-tongued skink. Her name is Oprah Skinkfree. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the name Oprah is Skinkfree? I'm okay. proud of it. I can't yeah, yeah, I love that. Proud yeah. of that That's one. a good one. <laughs> so the word skink means smooth <laughs> lizard with short legs. It's a very, very oh. accurate description oh. here. Oh. They have pretty short, essentially useless legs. They can't move very fast. Um, oh. I, I can't believe I'm going to ask this. Is Oprah friendly? She is very friendly. These are known for being friendly, which is why I thought she'd be perfect as a gateway reptile for yes. you. Would you, would you like to touch Oprah? I'd yeah. love to touch Oprah. <laughs> you can probably see why they're the blue oh, yeah. <laughs> She's very nice, yeah. Do you want to hold her? Sure. I oh, think, look, oh wow. look at Brave Fallon. Look at this. Just Fallon's going to hold Oprah. Underneath. Just like this? Yep, wherever. Perfect. Look at that. Hi. You want to you wanna ask she's her? her yeah, she's she, No, she's good. She's good. She, no, she wants to tell you her book club selection this oh. month. That's right, yeah. What's your favorite thing? Yeah, yeah. that's right. She is turning to look at you, though. Mm. I, I am noticing that. I don't, yep. Are you are you good? Should we return Oprah? I'm not holding that thing. There's no way. No, no, no. Yeah. I figured with her, I could point out a couple of the differences between snakes and lizards because yeah. she's very slender and almost snake-like. But if you look close at the side of her head, she has these big holes on the sides, and those are her ears. Snakes don't have ear holes, and this is going to come into play later. So remember this. Remember this. Okay. Also, remember that snakes don't have ears. That's right. Yeah. And also, if you look at her eyes, she has eyelids, so she can blink her eyes. Not a single snake has eyelids, so that's another difference. Right there. Okay, okay so give it up for that. Oprah Skinkry or Skinkry. Skink, not Skink. Not, not, not Oprah Skinkry. Oprah Skinkry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll go, now we're going to. Okay, here we go. Yes. Put it around your waist. Yeah, All right. here we go. So now we have a beautiful and adorably cute, uh, uh, adorably small, I guess, still, still has some growing to do, red tailed boa. Oh, boa. Yeah. That's yeah. a boa constrictor, yes. right? Yes, yes. I have brought a boa on here before. It was you have? A, yeah, it was a common boa, I believe, named Doug. Doug. This one's name is Tomato. She is a red tailed boa, and they're called that because they have a pretty red colored tail. It's a perfect name for them. Now, boas, uh, because my friend Jason had one, uh, they're pretty docile. Like, if you're going to have a pet, 
in the snake variety, this is a pretty good one to have, right? Yes, other than how big they get and therefore how much space you need for them, they are very docile, very friendly snakes, good eaters, they're excellent pets. Yeah, like this could easily sleep in that dog bed that you bought. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> I noticed you said the, the snakes don't blink. I uh, don't like that. I don't like that they're always watching. <laughs> You, you can, you'll never wear a, win a staring contest. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, let's do one more. Let's give it up for the red tail bear. We have one more. Yes. Bye, sweetie. <laughs> Bye, sweetie. I just called the, I just called the snake sweetie. Bye, yeah. honey. See, you're falling for them. They're wonderful, aren't they? Okay, so this is a little bit different. Why this do I think that's going to be deceiving? Well, yeah. it, it doesn't have eyeballs. So, I mean, there's something kind of odd. you got to look really close, though, to notice that there's there's no eyes on this mm -hmm. snake. I should I do want to mention they should have eyes. This is called a ball python. They should have oh. eyes. Oh, I know a ball python, yeah. Yeah, they're excellent starter snakes as well. This one was just born with a genetic mutation, like lacking scales. This one's lacking eyes. Um, but it can Aww. still see just fine because that, they have that extra sense of sight in a way. They, can, they have heat-sensing pit organs, those holes on its lips. Mm -hmm. those allow to see the infrared view of its surroundings yeah. so it's it can sensing hunt my just heat fine. For sure. yeah. <laughs> it's sensing Fallon's heat and my fear <laughs> yeah. yeah but the, again the balls are docile right oh, yeah. I mean they, they're very docile they're called ball pythons because they just curl up into a ball like this oh. so and that's basically yeah very Little easy to hold pet. if you just want to hold him uh, maybe in a minute no? okay. I'll, hold, I'll hold the ball python okay. They're very Just, it's unnecessary. <laughs> okay. Now, this is what I know about Emily. This it has to be an appetizer because there has to be bigger ones coming. Am I right? Oh, uh, we brought some weird things for you this time. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Fallon and I love weird things. Yeah, we that do. more when we come back, back in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> And behave. Here we go. We're back with Emily from Snake Discovery. Okay, Emily, what do we have next? Okay, next I have a mystery reptile. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's up to you to figure that out based on what we were talking about earlier. So we've got a creature here, uh, very, very long, lanky, no legs at all. I'll let you determine. Can you look close and see any features that might tell you what it is? Is it blinking, yes. Fallon? It's I don't see a blink, but I do see ear holes. Nice, you got both of them. Yeah, yeah nice. So that's a lizard. This is a lizard. It's called a legless yeah, lizard. A legless lizard. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Her a, but but not a snake. Not a snake. Yeah. The ear holes, the eyelids. They have cone-shaped teeth instead of fang-shaped teeth. They've got a long tail. I mean, the tail starts way up here. Um, her name is Legolas. Legolas lizard. We have one at the. Uh, there's one at our zoo named Lieutenant Dan, but he's not as friendly, so oh. he stays at the zoo. Oh, because okay. oh, because he needs magic legs. Yes, that's yeah, right. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Are I they like fast? They actually are very slow, from oh, what I've noticed. They're, I like they're, that. They live underground in burrows. Those legs just got in the way, so they just don't, don't have legs. It's yeah. not, not needed for this species. Um, this one is actually very friendly, though. They just kind of sit wherever you put them. Do you want to hold her? Come on, Fallon. Not a snake. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. She really doesn't she move doesn't, much. She doesn't move at all. She's like me on the weekends on the couch. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, two more. Yeah, we'll give yeah. Legolas back. Sure. Thank you. Okay. You know um, the movie Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, by yeah. the way? Uh -huh. The snake pit scene? They just used a bunch of legless lizards. <gasps> they cheated. They didn't even use snakes. Oh. They were all legless lizards. Oh, yeah. because it's probably safer. Probably. Insurance yeah. and, yeah, thanks. Could be, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay, we're trading out reptiles. What do we have here? Okay, this is a unique species. This is called a plated lizard, and they're named after all these plate-like scales covering their body. They feel like an armadillo. Oh. Yeah, you've got to touch. Him. He's oh. just so yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, these are really neat. They live in Africa, and when they're scared, they wedge themselves into rock crevices, and then they inflate with air, which keeps them stuck in there, and there's no way you're going to remove them at that point. Oh. Yeah, that's how the scales come in handy. That's why they're kind of laterally flattened. They have that flat body. They just are wedge-shaped to get away from predators. <laughs> cool. yeah. I mean, 
and knows what it's doing. Yeah. And knows what it's doing. Yes. Uh, what do they eat? These eat a lot of insects. They'll eat uh, rodents if they can catch them. They eat just really anything they can catch. They're not that picky. They're they're meat eaters uh, in general. Okay. Um, now, there's something on my card that I never, ever want to see. Uh, these are cards that uh, talk about the guests on the show. And I, I saw the word venomous. Venomous. Uh, is that what we're the grand finale? Yeah, I, uh, I actually need gloves for this last animal, so we're going to put these on. <laughs> it's, a, it's a no for me, Don. Fallon is... Uh, Val and is peacing out, as they say, okay, uh, those are mighty big gloves you have on. Yes, um, we want to play it safe. I'm not expecting this animal to want to bite me. She's, well, she's going to want to. I'm not ex expecting her to bite me, but to be safe, we have gloves. I'm not expecting <laughs> Fallon to stay on the set. <laughs> Just a okay, little distance what do we here. have? Uh, let me grab her here. This is the U.S.'s only venomous species of lizard. Whoop, sorry. Some, just betting, just betting. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a Gila monster. She's That's a Gila so monster. Yes. Okay. Yes, look at that. And I got it. Let me just make a production note. In the commercial break, director Leo told me to stand more in the center. No. No. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, Leo, I politely decline your request. Okay, uh, talk to us about the Gila monster. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people pronounce it Gila monster. It's spelled G-I-L-A, but if you want to sound like a professional, use, use an H. It's a Gila monster. These live in Arizona and the southwestern portion of the U.S. They're very slow moving, though, so they're not really a threat to humans at all, but they are venomous. and They, they haven't been found to use their venom on prey, though, because they're not fast enough to chase prey. They eat a lot of eggs because eggs won't run away from you. Yeah. So we, we assume their venom is more used defensively rather than to catch their food items, but they're really cool animals. If you want, you can pet her, oh, her like this after you <laughs> nice. awesome. kind of feels like an ex of mine yeah a little bit yeah so, he, was, he was venomous as well <laughs> no. uh, Emily, really quick, people can visit the Discovery Center, right? Absolutely. We're in Maplewood. We're a reptile store and an educational center. We do reptile birthday parties. We have a ton of reptiles on display that you can see and learn about. Here, kids, here's a Gila monster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Give it up for our good friend Emily, everybody. Be sure to check out all of Emily's amazing videos. You will learn so much that, uh, on the Snake Discovery YouTube channel and visit her website, snakediscovery.com. We're going we're gonna to remove the moisture from both me and Fallon, and we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> Beautiful. Happy to say Fallon hasn't quit, so it's, I know, it's time, it's time for the world's shortest segment. Something new at Epcot in Orlando, the brand new Moana Journey of Water opens next week at Epcot at uh, Walt Disney World, but some fans are getting a sneak peek uh, this week as part of uh, a soft opening. They do this sometimes. The park uh, recreates, the area recreates the world from the hit moving, letting guests discover the magical world of water. Fans can choose the wet version or the dry version when experiencing the area. The official opening for Moana is Monday, October 16th. You basically control water. It's from what I understand, it's really cool. I can't wait to see it myself. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. I should say, too, we'll end how we began. I was mentioning the big charity event I'm getting ready to do with my radio station starting tomorrow, uh, and it is a charity component, and uh, my show is raising money for a, an organization that's near and dear to me. I'll be hitting y'all up for some donations, and that's Big Brothers Big Sisters uh, of the Twin Cities. Yeah. Um, it is a revelatory, I mean, just a transformative uh, organization for me personally. I will explain why uh, in the days ahead. I think we're going to do that on Thursday and how that that wonderful uh, group of people changed my life and a young man's. And you'll, uh, you'll understand coming up on Thursday. But tomorrow, 
problem solving gadgets from the gadget guy. I'm chatting uh, also live with our buddy Jennifer Hudson about the new season of her show. That and more coming up tomorrow and no reptiles. That's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.